Now we're ready to look at the four acid-base imbalances, the respiratory acidosis or alkalosis and the metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. And we'll look at what are the causes of each of those, some of the symptoms, and then uh, what physiological compensations are made to try to return the pH back to normal. And then finally, we'll, we'll try to identify a patient and see what we have to look at to determine if that patient has one of those four imbalances. So let's start with metabolic acidosis. Now think of metabolic acidosis as, first of all, is the pH is too low, and the cause then is going to be anything other than respiratory problems. So things like lactic acidosis or ketoacidosis, a buildup of metabolic acids, and hyperthyroidism can cause that buildup in those acids. Or we see ketoacidosis in um, diabetics when they um, are burning proteins for energy sources, they make ketone bodies. And then there's some other conditions tied in with the kidney or diarrhea or even hyperkalemia. That is too high levels of potassium that go hand in hand with acidosis. And then associated with that are going to be all kinds of different symptoms that are I've seen on this slide. Not that I want you to get bogged down by the symptoms, uh, but get an idea of some, if you're curious, some of the things that you may see in a patient with metabolic acidosis. Now the compensation then, and the problem we can see on this slide, again, it's too low a pH, primarily because we just have too low levels of bicarbonates. By having all those metabolic acids building up, for example, we need to remove that acid and we use the bicarbonates to do so, and we've simply run out. We're too low on the number of bicarbonates available. And so since there's too little bicarbonates here, you can see here, then I've got too much acid and my teeter-totter's out of whack. So to compensate then, I need to decrease the amount of partial pressure CO2. Um, and then if I decrease the denominator, notice that's going to bring the pH back to normal. Now notice I still have a little arrow here, but my arrow is a lot smaller, indicating that maybe it's a little bit of a drop in pH. It's closer to normal, but often with these um, imbalances, you never get it quite back to normal. You get it, but it's close to normal. And so to get low levels of uh, carbon dioxide, what we do is hyperventilate. Hyperventilating is increasing that breathing rate so that we lower partial pressures to CO2. And that way, so notice we get rid of the CO2 or the carbonic acid on this side to make it equal. The next one is respiratory acidosis and respiratory acidosis. Now we're talking about a problem with the respiratory system. As the guy says, I can't breathe. Um, so things like respiratory dis depression, like resulting from anesthesia or overdose or intracranial pressure increases that affect the uh, respiratory centers in the medulla and therefore result in um, not be able to breathe properly, you actually are lowering your respiratory rates and thereby increasing partial pressures of CO2. Also, anything that affects the airways, um, such as obstructions or decreases in alveolar capillary uh, diffusion, so we're affecting um, gas exchange, so things like pneumonia, COPD, um, adult respiratory distress syndrome or pulmonary embolisms that can result in a decrease in gas exchange, thereby meaning you have higher levels of CO2. Sleep apnea, respiratory muscle fatigue are a couple other things. And then associated with that are going to be, of course, all of these possible um, symptoms that you'll see with uh, respiratory acidosis. So again, the problem is a low pH caused by an increase in partial pressures of CO2, so we have too much carbonic acid, as we can see in our teeter-totter here. So to compensate then, if we have got too much CO2, let's compensate and increase the, the numerator. So let's increase uh, bicarbonate levels, again, balancing out our teeter-totter here. Again, the pH is still going to be a little on the low side, but it's going to be closer to normal by upping the bicarbonate levels. And we can up those bicarbonate levels by 
having the kidneys reabsorb more bicarbonates and maybe also excrete some more metabolic acids along the way. Even though it's a respiratory problem, let's get rid of any lactic acid hydrogens because a hydrogen's a hydrogen no matter where it came from. So let's get rid of some of those metabolic acids as well. Now you might try to see someone with respiratory acidosis trying to increase their ventilation by attempting to breathe harder, say somebody with COPD, for example. Um, but it's, you can't fix respiratory with respiratory. So this might be attempted, but it's not usually very effective. The next imbalance is gonna be respiratory alkalosis. In this case, again, we're talking about a respiratory problem. But now instead of acidosis, we have alkalosis, that is, our uh, pH is too high. And this is gonna be due to low levels of CO2, partial pressures of CO2. So anything that's leading to low levels of CO2, such as hyperventilating. Hyperventilating does lower partial pressures of CO2. So you can see if someone hyperventilating when they're anxious, or if they have a pulmonary embolism, or if they're scared. Um, those, all three of those can, or great deal pain as well. Um, all of those can cause a person to hyperventilate and then thereby lowering their um, CO2 levels and causing respiratory alkalosis. Prolonged sobbing can have the same result or hypoxemia, trying to make up for low levels of oxygen by breathing um, faster and harder. That would may result in uh, respiratory alkalosis or alcohol withdrawal or some damage to the brain stem like those from gram-negative sepsis or head injuries and meningitis can affect that respiratory centers again in the medulla resulting in hyperventilation. The result again is all these other symptoms that are shown here um, and that including again now in this case hypokalemia which is tied right in with, with any alkalosis condition. So the problem, again, is too little CO2. The partial pressure of CO2 is way too low, as you can see in our tear totter. so now our pH is too high. So to compensate, if the level in the denominator is too low, let's just lower the numerator. So let's decrease bicarbonate levels, and that's what the kidneys will do. They'll try to excrete more bicarbonates or just not reabsorb all the bicarbonates, and therefore you end up with those bicarbonates in the um, urine. Or they can also decrease the excretion of metabolic acids, that is simply not secrete as many hydrogen ions. The lungs can try to compensate. Again, it's not easy to fix lungs with lungs, so any attempts to hypo hypoventilate may be um, useless. But one of the common things that you see people do when they're in um, hyperventilating when they're anxious is you ask them to breathe into a paper bag. The effect there is by breathing the paper bag, you're inhaling CO2 and thereby increasing the partial pressure of CO2 back to normal to get the pH back to normal. The problem with doing that though is that if you're breathing into a paper bag, um, you're not getting any new oxygen into your lungs either, so you might end up being hypoxemic and that could result in your fainting. Of course, that would get rid of the anxiety if you fainted. The last one of our um, imbalances then is metabolic alkalosis. In this case, now we're again, we're turning to metabolism related things, so it's not respiratory. Anything but respiratory is gonna be re metabolic alkalosis. So things like severe vomiting, or excessive GI suctioning. What you're basically doing is removing all the acids that are in the stomach that would normally balance out your blood pH. So by removing those acids, now your blood is too basic. Um, so, and then another one that you can see with metabolic alkalosis is excessive um, ingestion of sodium bicarbonates. In other words, think of someone who just decided to, you know, OD on Tums. Um, they just decided to have about three or four rolls of Tums and that would mean a huge amount of sodium bicarbonates into the digestive tract, a lot of base, basically what you're adding to your blood and thereby um, ending up with metabolic alkalosis. And then of course you get all these symptoms associated with it as well. So the problem is 
in metabolic alkalosis is too much bicarbonates. Um, think again, Tums, you've just added a bunch of bicarbonates to uh, the blood, so now your pH is too high. So we have too many bicarbonates here. So what do you do? Well, let's balance it out. If I have too much bicarbonates, let's add some uh, carbon dioxide. And so the lungs will then try, will hypoventilate, and that thereby increase partial pressures to CO2. The kidneys could also come into play and basically not reabsorb a bunch of bicarbonates, that is lower bicarbonate levels, and that would be as effective as well um, as the hypoventilating. So now what do we do to figure out what our patient has that walks in? So for example, let's say a patient walks in and has elevated breathing rate, and you know nothing else other than they're breathing rather heavily. Is that respiratory alkalosis? Because of their hyperventilating, lowering CO2 levels would mean hyper would mean respiratory alkalosis, or is it that they're compensating for metabolic acidosis by hyperventilating, trying to get rid of CO2 to adjust that um, acidity caused by, say, lactic acid buildup? So to figure it out, we need to more information other than their breathing hard. So let's look at the pH, the partial pressure of the CO2, which will help reflect the um, respiratory component of this, and then um, look at bicarbonate levels to indicate what's going on with the kidneys and the urinary component for this. So first, obviously, thing to look at is the pH. Is it above 7.45 indicating they're in alkalosis or is it below 7.35 indicating they're in acidosis so at least that eliminates two out of the four we know where they're if it's alkalosis that's either respiratory or metabolic if it's acidosis we know it's either respiratory or metabolic so the next one is then thing to check is the co2 levels or the partial pressure of the co2 if the partial pressure of co2 is in opposite direction of the ph Okay, then we know the cause is respiratory. So for example here, if we pH is down, but the partial pressure CO2 is high, then I have too much CO2 making too much acid, and therefore that's the cause of the respiratory acidosis. If the CO2 levels are normal, then I know I'm in metabolic acidosis. And then the third one is to look at uh, bicarbonate levels. If the bicarbonate levels are in the same direction as the pH, then I know that um, it's a metabolic cause. So for example, for metabolic acidosis, the pH is low. The bicarbonate levels are low in this case because they're trying to compensate for um, all that acid by using the bicarbonates up as a buffer whereas CO2 levels are normal, so I know it's not respiratory because the problem isn't with the CO2, it's with bicarbonate, so I know I'm in a metabolic um, acidosis, or as I can see here with increase in pH and the bicarbonate's running in the same direction, I know I'm in metabolic alkalosis. And so finally, if both partial pressures of CO2 and bicarbonate are not normal, then Whichever one is more closely corresponds to the pH and deviates more from normal, it's going to be that problem. So in other words, maybe I might have respiratory acidosis. Uh, I might see a patient, obviously low pH, they've got high CO2 levels indicating um, acidosis, and maybe slight decrease in bicarbonates because of compensating for it, but the decrease in bicarbonates isn't going to be as closely tied in or as closely um, monitored and in the in um, then the CO2 levels so it really is respiratory acidosis there's also it gets even more complicated than this because in some cases a patient may end up having more than one of these acid base imbalances at the same time and so again this can get very highly complicated uh, beyond the scope of what we're going to be looking at in this class. So we'll keep it pretty straightforward when we practice doing these. And that gets us then to our practice questions, which I'm going to save for lecture and uh, in class, and we can see how well you understand um, these imbalances and what you can predict from them.